Hey, what's going on everybody? Hey, welcome back to another training video lesson. In this video lesson, I am going to talk about market posture and when is the right time to trade the squeeze versus other strategy, okay? So if that's something that you were wondering, hey, based on market posture, when is the right time to trade the squeeze or when is the right time to move into another strategy such as maybe a bull flag or a breakout, then this video lesson is for you, all right? So if that sounds good to you, you know what to do. One, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so yet. Two, hit that little bell to be notified whenever I shoot a brand new video. Three, like this video. If you like the video, like it. And four, make a nice comment, okay? And stick around to the end because I've got an incredible bonus that I want to share with you for making it that far, all right? Enjoy this training video lesson. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Hey, welcome to a another training video lesson. I'm going to be talking about market posture today, okay? But I want to go some deep, right? And maybe deeper than most people will take it, okay? So... Discussing market posture, we always look for our intermediate term posture first, right? Is the blue above the pink, which is the 8 exponential above the 34. A very easy way to determine your intermediate term trend is, is the blue stacked above the pink? Move on averages are trending indicators, trending indicators. Hence the word, and again, trending. They're only valuable when they are either trending up or trending down. When they start to go flat, they're no longer valuable. And lots of traders, what they'll do when the market goes flat is they'll just remove the indicators altogether, okay? So look at the S&P 500. One of the things I wanna talk about is on market posture, we're gonna dive into short term. Short term is critical. Now I'm not discussing day trading, okay? So if you're short term trading and you're day trading, different animal, all by itself, okay? I'm talking more about right this moment in this video on the daily time frame. okay? When I learned how to trade, that's the time frame that I learned how to trade on. It fit my lifestyle beautifully, and I made consistent income along with my mentors who traded the daily time frame. Now, one of the things that we were talking about, when we're talking about short-term posture, short-term posture is the hardest one to get, right? We talk about highs and lows. And if you see here, these green boxes, they represent highs and lows. So you got to know how to determine what is a high. A high is a close below the low of the high day. So assuming that that's the close right there. It closed below the low of the high day, right? Now we add an extra caveat to that. Is it closed below the low of the high day or, or any inside slash following day, right? That bearish Harami, that uh, inside bar. I mean, look at this Harami right there. Okay, you see this bearish Harami. Yes, the body is inside the body, but it did not close below the low of the high day. So because of that, we have not drawn a box. Now, we've already got a low, so the next progression is a high. So now look where we're at in the S&P 500, and we're about to fire. We're breaking resistance. We're breaking resistance. We still are climbing to the upside. The lows are getting higher, and the highs are getting higher, except this little pennant that we got, right? A pennant, right? For those of you that know technical analysis, you know that we got us a little beautiful inside bar slash pennant. Boom, and it resumed to the upside. Until we close below the low of the high day, which right now, that's the high day because this candle has not closed. We will, the short, short term, as Dave Johnson would say, the three day short term is up. Now, my short term posture, whenever we get anything other than higher highs and higher lows, it shifts to neutral. But because we're breaking high, I'm now neutral to bullish. And I will be full blown bullish once we pull back 
in bounds, but neutral to bullish. Okay, that's my short-term posture. So what, if you're going to trade the daily time frame, and that's why I stress the word daily time frame, this stuff is the game changer. Okay, short turns different animal, but the daily time frame, this is the key. And I know because all my mentors pretty much focus on the daily time frame, and some of them made more money than, I mean, than I can ever imagine. Okay, so let's now go into a discussion that I, you know, want to build upon this. Again, one of the things that I like to talk about are the same concepts over and over again, but. I feel that maybe I'll deliver this message in a way that if some of you are kind of struggling or at least you don't get it, you might say, oh my gosh, now I get it, right? Dave Johnson calls it a BGO, blinding glimpse of the obvious. So let's make this obvious. So one of the things that, again, I go back constantly and I think about when I did the best and when I did not, I'm always reviewing my notes. I've got, you know, 10 to 11,000 pages of notes and I'm always reviewing, reviewing my notes and I'm just looking back and every time that I would take class, I would write the teacher at the top, like Scott Thompson, Dave Johnson, Dave Settle, Blake Young, Mike Follett, right? Tom Sosnoff. And what I would do is I would categorize my notes based on them. So as I was going through them, I would be putting a pile of Scott Thompson's, it's got you know, Dave Johnson and stuff like that. So I was reviewing my notes with Dave Johnson. Okay, last night, I was just going through them. I like to go through them periodically because we're always learning as Rafa always so eloquently puts. So one of the things that I'm always trying to do is give myself an advantage, right? And going back through my notes and it's interesting because, you know, as I was writing the notes, I would highlight stuff and I would put important, I would draw stars, I would draw arrows. And just going through about 50 pages last night, just kind of skimming through 50 pages just to look for the ones that I wrote important. <laughs> you know, just kind of flip and flip and flip it. Oh, important. Okay. Flip, flip. Oh, important. You know, there was kind of a common theme on some of them, and it had to do with, again, and Dave Johnson taught this so much, and I don't know if I paid attention to it as much as I am trying to get everybody to pay attention to it now, was align your strategy with market posture. And again, let's talk about daily, okay? Not talking about day trading. I always have to re go back to that. It's a different animal daily okay i made a lot of money on the daily time frames a lot of money and i know you can make a living because even though i had a full-time job the amount of money that i was making consistently trade well not consistently i sucked for a long time but once i figured it out trading was more than what a lot of people will make working their full-time jobs for a year you know and that's pretty i mean, I mean that's like easy okay i mean a lot of more money and I was just doing it in like an hour to two hours a day. But this theme right here. So we always want to ask ourselves, what is the broad market doing? And then we trade based on what it's doing. For example, the broad market right now is at resistance. It's at resistance. So we got to think. Since the market is at resistance... We need to align our strategy with what the market's doing. So right now, when I look at this, I think to myself, okay, the market can break out and run for a couple days, okay? Could break out two to three days, pull back. So if, and the key word is if, if it breaks out, we expect a couple more days of positive momentum, and then we pull back into a bull flag. So if it breaks out and it's we're expecting just for a couple of days, that's when the bullish ATR plan would work out well. We look for stronger sectors or at least coincidence sectors. And then we would trade bull flag pullbacks 
ATR. Because if the momentum continues for a couple days, we're golden, right? We don't want to be trading the ATR plan when the market is, you know, still a ways from resistance, right? Because again, it could just go up for one day, not a way, but a couple, like a day or so away from resistance, because it could go up one day and roll over. And if that happens, I'm telling you, 60 to 70 to maybe 80% of your ATR trades are going to lose. If the market breaks out and we enter a bunch of ATR trades and it rolls over after one day, we're going to lose. Let me repeat that. If the market breaks out and goes up one day and then rolls over and we enter a bunch of ATR trades today, we're going to lose the majority of them. Now, we have a better chance if we're trading you know, at least coincident stocks or leading stocks in leading sectors. And again, remember daily. Let's get look, we're digesting the daily time frame. This is the key to your trading, the daily time frame. Whether you accept it or not, this is the golden ticket. Now, what else? What else? We if the market breaks out, then we or again, it's right of resistance, we should be looking for breakout trades. Breakout trades in stronger sectors. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the sector watch list, and I'm going to look for sectors that are already broken out. And then I'm going to go to the top 10 holdings, and I'm going to try to see if I can find an ATR trade or a breakout trade. Because if the market breaks out, and this sector's already broke out, there's a higher probability that that stock's going to break out. Okay? Another thing I want to look for when a market's at resistance, and again, I'm aligning my strategy, and I'm, I'm focused. I'm like narrowed in on what I trade. So that way I don't have to be, you know, again, thinking about, oh, do I trade a green to black? Oh, do I trade a five dollar squeeze? No, no, no. This is what I'm looking for right now. Okay. Now, the market has been going up. So another thing, when the market is in an uptrend, the pullbacks, sometimes they might only be one to two days. All right. So it might pull back. It might pull back here for one to two days and then resume its trend, maybe form like an ascending or, you know, a mini cup and handle, right? And then go. So this move right here is not much. So this is where an ATR trade to the downside, looking for bear flags in weak sectors, in weak stocks. So that way, if it does roll over, one or two days is all we need. To just clean it up. So that is what I'm looking for right now. That's it. That's it. Am I looking for green to blacks? No. I'm not looking for green to blacks. I don't even I'm I don't, I'm not even going to pull up a watch list of green to blacks. Why? Because green to blacks work best when the market's pulling back into a flag. That's what we're looking for. So when the market rolls over down here, here, that's when we go search for green to blacks. Five dot squeezes. Am I looking for five dot squeezes right now? No, I'm not. Why? What are markets at resistance? I'm going to look for five dot squeezes when a market pulls back to support. When the market is at support, like in the bigger time frame, that's when I'm going to look for these five dot squeezes, these green to blacks, because if the market bounces, 
we're going to win probably 70, 80 to 90% of those. If I go enter a bunch of green to blacks now, now listen, I do have probabilities on my side if I do vertical spreads, which is fine. But if the market pulls back like it did here, I had a nice, I had a nice drawdown. I entered a bunch of spread trades at the perfect time. But the market wasn't ready to go up. So what I did was I suffered a nice fat drawdown. But because it was a probability trade, I was able to stomach it. Now, I know traders. I know traders that entered a bunch of spread trades. And as the market went down, they closed out those trades for losses. And had they followed their plan, as Charles says, trade the plan, focus on the plan, they would have been just fine. But I know people who closed out the trade for losses. And now they're shooting themselves on the foot because they're like, dang it, are you serious? So again, lining the appropriate strategy with where the market is at. It's so important. If I go put on a bunch of green and black trades now and this does roll over, I'm going to take some more heat. Doesn't mean I'm not going to win those trades because we're going into it with probabilities anyway. But I, I don't like taking heat. I'll deal with it, but I don't like to. So right now, my words of wisdoms are the market's at resistance. What I'm looking for, what I'm looking for is breakout trades, leading stocks, and leading sectors. ATR trades, leading stocks and leading sectors. ETR bearish trades, lagging stocks and lagging sectors. Okay? And if you want to know more about how to trade those strategies, well, then take a look inside of our university and join us in our live coaching. All right? All right, everybody. Hey, thanks so much. Hopefully you enjoyed that video lesson. Watch that. My recommendation to you is watch it over and over and over and over again. Even if you think it seeks in, sinking in, you watch it again. Because I can promise you this, you're going to look at your trading a year from now. For those of the people that are still in the business, they're going to realize this was the ticket. Because I didn't pay attention to this for the longest time. And my mentor, who's probably a better trader than I could ever even imagine myself being, every day he did the same thing. And we were all like, ah, oh, dude, again, he didn't care. You know why? His job was simple. He loved to teach. He would always tell us that his mission was to teach people how to trade the market, not the news, and have them understand what really matters. All right. All right, everybody. Thanks for joining. And we'll see you in the next training video lesson. All right, everybody. I hope you enjoyed that video lesson. Man, it is so important to understand the correlations between market posture, support and resistance, and what strategies you put on and what strategies you stay away from. All right? Now, down below, you should see a couple of links. One, you should see a link to the TTM Squeeze Pro. Okay, now you can go to simplertrading.com and you can purchase that TTM Squeeze Pro. But if you get that indicator through my affiliate link, which is down below, here's what I'm going to do for you. Number one is you get a discount for using my link. So that's already good enough. But number two, those custom columns that you saw in the video, the nice colors on the left hand side, I believe it was, I am going to give you those for free. Okay, they go with the TTM Squeeze Pro. I had them custom made, cost me over $1,000. And if you use my affiliate link to the TTM Squeeze Pro, you're going to get the Squeeze Pro at a discount 
and I'm going to give you those special codes, okay? Now, another indicator you saw was the Ready Aim Fire Pro. That was the one at the very bottom, okay? Again, you can go to simplertrading.com and you can purchase the Ready Aim Fire Pro. But if you use my affiliate link, because I'm affiliated with Simpler Trading, through that, you do not get a discount on the indicator. But because you don't get a discount, I'm going to hook you up if you use my link, okay? So in the video, I have these Ready Aim Fire Pro weekly momentum stickers. I'm going to give those to you for free, okay? In addition to my stacked EMA custom script code with toss, okay? So in the video, if you go back at the top, you're going to see all sorts of custom scripts. One is the Ready Aim Fire weekly momentum. Okay, it's not necessarily weekly. It's just a Ready Aim Fire momentum code. It makes it to where I don't have to bounce back and forth between the bigger time frames and the smaller time frames. So it lets me know what is the momentum on the different time frame. That helps see that saves so much time. Also, the stacked EMAs, right? So the eight and the twenty-one and thirty-four. It lets you know when they're stacked just by the colors. Again, you can see that, but it makes it a lot easier with that code. Okay, now. The next thing is my Options 101, okay, 101 course. It's a free course that I'm giving out for introduction traders. So if you're new to options or if you're maybe an intermediate option trader, then that course is perfect for you. It's completely free. And then the big one, right? My Options Elite Master Course, okay? So down below, you're going to see the link to the Options Elite Master Course. I was running a special in February, but I decided to extend it through March, okay? So not only are you going to get a massive discount on my course, but if you click that link below, it's going to take you to all of the bonuses that I'm giving you. And again, I've now extended it to March. All of those bonuses, okay? There's too many for me to say in this video lesson. Just click the link to the Options 101, and if you end up getting my course in this month, I'm going to throw in all of those bonuses that I mentioned. All right, everybody, hopefully you enjoyed that. Until next time, everybody, it's Trader Jeff Moore, author of the book Trading Part-Time, CEO, lead instructor of the Trading Part-Time University, and I'll see you in the next.